Hey, check this out. It's a workhorse in a Bronco. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Alton. I'm so glad you could join me. If you feel like liking and subscribing, it really does go a long way to propping up my fragile ego. I'm very insecure, and you could really help me out if you just hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Today, I'm really excited to bring to you something from Vero. I have been a huge fan of this micro brand for some time. Their Rally is one of my grail watches except for the fact that it's 36 millimeters and on an eight and a half inch wrist, I just couldn't really pull that off, at least not to my eye. So today we have something new and fresh. It's a collaboration between Teenage Grandpa and Vero, and I am really excited to show it to you. Now, according to their website, the watch before us is the Canyon. There's two versions, there's the Canyon, and there's the back country. The canyon is more the, the tan colored and the back country has a, a green Cerakoted case to it and a little bit of a different vibe. It's a little less in your face, a little more subtle. I went for the in your face model and the desert version. They say that this version takes design cues from the tones of the desert and you can absolutely see that. Well, why don't we take a little bit of a closer look at the workhorse and I think you're really going to like it. So the Workhouse by Vero is a departure from their original roots. Based in Portland, Oregon, they had a design philosophy where they would design and build everything in-house. Part of that meant that the cost was quite high. And I think that they were successful, but not as successful as they possibly could be. They had amazing designs that I absolutely adore, but at the end of the day, I don't think they sold in the numbers they wanted to. So they did a bit of a soft rebrand relaunch two watches ago, and that started with the open water. I actually have one on the way. I'm really excited to see it. That should come out to me next week. And the open water was their first watch, I believe, that wasn't actually designed, assembled, and built all in-house. They actually had them built in Switzerland and I believe assembled in Oregon. But anyway, a lot of that stuff happened in a little bit of a more economical way, but also still achieving that high end feel that they had been known for. And and so what we have here in this watch is a bit of a departure from the open water because that was a really, really subtle, really basic in a good way kind of watch. But here, what we have is something that's uh, more whimsical, more creative, and in many ways is a fusion of the new design philosophy they have with the old bold colors and design philosophy that they used to have. So uh, while this might seem as a bit of uh, an interesting twist on where they've been going, I think at the end of the day, it's really a, a marriage of, of their new and their old way of thinking. So, so this watch immediately you're going to notice is a bit of a hefty fella, but it's not as big as you might think. At 44 and a half, it is quite wide, and you'll notice it has a bit of a Seiko tuna-ish case, but definitely it only evokes that feel. It really, when you look at it, is nothing like the tuna, except for the fact that it's very circular with short, small lugs. Other than that... It really is quite different. It's 49 and a half lug to lug, so it will wear pretty well on most wrists, I would think. And they list it on the website as 15 and a half thick, but I don't know exactly where they're measuring because when I measure from the case back to the crystal, I'm getting just under 13 millimeters. With these guards, it's about 13 and a half, 14 millimeters. So I think they might be overselling the thickness in a way. And to me, that's actually a good thing. But make no mistake with the bold colors, the bright pushers on the side, these rubber coated bull bars here, it definitely has a lot of presence on wrist and it's definitely a unique piece. That's for sure. So the workhorse is a one hour chronograph. It has a Miyota 6S21 movement in it. And I absolutely love that. 
because I get a little bit sick of that Seiko chronograph movement with that 24 hour dial. I can look outside and see that it's dark. I don't need a 24 hour dial. And it's, it's a bit weird when you first look at it because most of the pushers are over here. This is the crown. This is start stop. This is reset. And this button over here actually changes the rotating dial underneath this air coated sapphire crystal is a rotating bezel, which is pretty super cool. Let me show you the chronograph movement. Actually, what I want to say about it is it is super intuitive to use on the wrist. You might not think it, but that's the natural place that you'd want to put your hands. So, you know, it's, it's brilliant that they would put it over there. The pusher is nice and bright and orange. It says run and stop. And of course you have your reset button there. And there's even instructions on the crown to screw and unscrew it in case you're not too bright. You stop it, nice and tactile, reset it. And it doesn't have that snap back, but I actually, I don't know why, I prefer this way of, of doing it. The rotating bezel here, I will say is a little tricky. So you have to unscrew it. And then of course you can use it as a timing bezel if you want keeping track of hours or whatnot. But here's the thing, you've only got five minute indications. So you're definitely not going to do precision timing with this thing. I noticed that when I pop the crown back down, sometimes the inner rotating bezel moves. So you have to be aware of that. And that's why I think I may not use this a lot. It might just be kind of a for fun, for looks kind of thing. Because number one, you got to unscrew the crown and then putting it back, you need to precisely put it back. Although it looks like I got it pretty straight now. You see it's a little bit off there, but that's okay for now. Now unscrewing the crown, I would say you might have to take the watch off to do this aspect of it, but it has a nice pop to it. And then of course, when you pull it out, it hacks the movement, being a quartz movement. And then we can go ahead and set it to watch reviewer time, which is 1010, or a little bit before that. The water resistance on the workhorse is a pretty impressive and kind of strange 120 meters. Normally you see 100, 150, 200, not 120. I don't know where they came up with it, but they do mention that they have a triple gasket screw down crown, which should help you with that. I don't recommend engaging the pushers while you're underwater. I don't think that would be a good idea, but presumably you could take this swimming as long as you didn't fiddle with the pushers. And I don't think there's really any chance of engaging those by accident unless you're being super, super careless. Now, taking a look at the case, you'll see it's a pretty straight sided case, but it has some details that add some interest to it. It has a bit of a step case to it, which is something they're kind of known for. On the bottom, I'll see if I can get a close up of it. You notice that there's actually a notch for the bull bars and that really keeps them where they need to be. A bit of a notch too for that crown, which helps you grip it from the underside and check out how those bull bars follow the case back very, very nicely. So you might notice that on the bottom side of the case, there's another cutout here which is kind of interesting and it's off center, which is an interesting design cue. I wonder if it might wrap its way around, except the fact that there is that crown there for the inner rotating bezel to deal with. And on this side, there is not that groove. So sort of a, an interesting way of, of doing things. There's that same groove here where the lugs come in. I love the bull bars. It really does add a little bit of interest to it. A really neat design choice. I think that screams Teenage Grandpa. If you've ever been over to his Instagram site, you should definitely take a look at that. Now the case is Cerakoted, which is a process um, that I think they use a lot in weaponry. Uh, being Canadian, I don't know a whole lot about that kind of thing, but I know that it's a really tough, durable coating and it's got some texture to it. So it's, it's kind of matte, but it does catch the light. It's got some texture to it but it doesn't look unfinished. It definitely gives it that tactical vibe that people love in these kind of tool watches. The workhorse is priced at $425. And when I go to the website, it tells me that for $106.25, 
spread over four payments, two weeks apart, I could own this watch. This is a very, very affordable watch. The choice of movement, no doubt, plays a big part in that. But everything else together really adds up to something kind of special. Now, adding to that is a 10-year, no questions asked warranty. That's a huge deal. I have watched some reviews in the past and they said, well, that's all well and good, but it's a micro brand. Maybe they won't be around here in 10 years. I think that this company has been around for about seven years or so now. And with the way they're going, the buzz they're creating, they're just getting started. So I have full confidence that 10 years from now in 2032, this company will still be here making hopefully some pretty interesting and engaging watches for the watch enthusiast. Let's talk about my picks and my nitpicks for the Vero Workhorse. The picks, I love the bold colors. I love the Cerakoted case, the bull bars. I grew up in the 80s, so I love this kind of thing. The retro orange and yellow chapter ring. Everything is fun and playful. This is not a precision instrument in a certain way. You'll notice that there's not a lot of minute markers or second markers, especially on the subdials. So it sort of just kind of generally puts you in the ballpark of what you're timing. You're not going to be using this to time at F1 race. But that's not the point of this watch. The point of this watch is to be fun, to be durable, throw it on your wrist, go for a hike. That's the kind of thing that this is meant for. And I really, really like it. I love the orientation of the pushers on the left side. And of course, the color that is used, the shorter lug to lug for such a uh, small, uh, for such a big watch is something that I really like. And this strap, the strap is one of my picks and my nitpicks. Now, I think the idea of this strap is brilliant and I think it's well executed. Everything matches the black coated lugs with the black hardware. The tan and the black is great, but there is a huge problem for me and that's when I put it on the wrist. You see, they say that it'll fit up to an eight and a half inch wrist, which is what I have. And when I put it on my wrist, I have barely just enough grip to ensure that this strap is sticking on my wrist. And so when I put it on my wrist, you'll see where the transition is from the grippy part to the sticky part. It's kind of just about a half inch onto that part, which makes me worry that it would just pull off. Now, at first I wasn't even wearing it on this strap. At first I was just kind of put off and bothered by the whole thing. But then I gave it a try and it is holding. Would I want to put my hand out the window while driving and know that my watch isn't gonna fall off? Well, absolutely not. The, the nice thing about this strap though is the design of it. So first of all, there's a little bit of an overlap here for comfort. And, and that plays a role when it's on the wrist. The second aspect to it is that this second loop actually Velcros off and back on. Why is that? This inner loop here with the Velcro is actually smaller from side to side than this one. And so when it's on the wrist, watch what happens. That covers the whole thing, covers the lug to lug, which is kind of a nice touch. Now, but because I have a bit of a bigger wrist, what I find is that um, some of the parts that are meant to protect you and cover you and keep it comfortable actually end up kind of being a little itchy on me. So when I wear it like this, I find this part here kind of scratches at my wrist, which is something I think I could get used to, but I don't know if this strap is going to be permanently on my wrist. The second nitpick that I have is this bull bar isn't quite straight. If you see, it, uh, it's just bent a little bit. I mean, it's not a big deal. I, I'm sure I can take it off. I could probably bend it back, although these things are kind of finicky and getting it right might take some trial and error. I did try to pop it off initially, but I was worried I was gonna scratch it and wreck it. I didn't want to do that in the first day. So for somebody like me who really struggles with things that just don't quite line up, that is a bit of a bother. But it's at the end of the day, not a huge deal, not gonna put me off 
from this watch. So there you have the Workhorse by Vero, and uh, I'm so glad that I was able to take a look at this watch. Thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.